Um, and today I'm going to introduce PHP lock, that's PHP LOC, and how to use that via command line to get the number of lines of code within a PHP application. So stick around and we'll get right on it. All right, so, so as you might guess, I do a fair amount of consulting. And when I consult with companies, often, well, I say often, but pretty much every single time, nobody knows how many lines of code they actually have inside their application. They know they have an application, they know it's big or small or maybe even medium, but they don't know how many lines of code are actually in their application. So. In order for me to properly gauge the size of an engagement, how long it would, how long it might take me uh, to to work with them, uh, sometime in some cases, uh, how bad their code might be, or how good it might be, or if it's just pretty standard, the the number one tool that I use is a tool called PHP LOC, PHP Lock. Um, and now the PHP lock was created by Sebastian Bergman. Um, I used to do, I used to have a script of my own that I used to get the lines of code. Uh, and then uh, many years ago, Sebastian finally created one and made it open source so everybody could share it. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, the library has a lot of contributors out there. And it's a very good tool. It gives in, a, in, a, in one screen, basically 30 or 35 lines, I don't know the exact number of lines, it tells me everything about the code in, in, in a nutshell, if you will. It just it gives me all the, the high level uh, st statistics and, and different pieces about it. Um, so what I do is I typically ask the customer, please run a PHP lock and then provide the results to me. It's just one file, 35 lines, but without that, I'm really not able to understand how I can go further with that customer. So I often ask them, or a customer, client, what have you, you know, please get the PHP lock. Now, the PHP lock is a command line tool. It is one that, it, you know, it is PHP, first off. The PHP lock is created in PHP. And so as you're, as you're using it, you're actually executing PHP via command line. So you're using PHP CLI. And after it's run, then you can tell it to either, it will by default output the results to your screen, to the, to the terminal, but you can also tell it to, to send the results to an external file, which is generally what I do. So, uh, so that being said, let me, t let me cover just a little bit more about the PHP lock and some of the, the statistics around it. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm actually going to, um, I'm actually going to have a local copy of a CMS called Concrete 5. Um, I just chose it because it's open source and it's out there and I'm familiar with the people, uh, great people at Concrete 5 over at Portland Labs. So I, so I wanted to use that. So what I did is I actually downloaded a copy of Concrete 5 and I've got uh, Concrete 5 version 8.5.1 on my, on my local drive. And um, then, so I'm gonna run the, the uh, PHP lock against that code. Uh, it, obviously I can't run it against the customer's code and I don't wanna run it across one of mine because I'm just doing some small libraries here and there. Nothing that I, can, nothing that I really want to be able to, to show this with. Now, on GitHub, Sebastian Bergman has a repository of Sebastian Bergman uh, slash PHP lock and that's where you can get the code uh, you can either uh, you can either download the code and or, or you can uh, download the far file. Uh, he's provided the instructions here where you can do wget and and pull down the file and then of course you want to do a chmod and make it executable the far file that's being downloaded. And then it's also recommended you can move it into an executable location on your hard drive, and then you can use it just by issuing the command PHP lock anywhere on your system and, and use it that way. That's one possible way to use it. Um, you can also use it um, as, uh, <clears throat> as just a, a FAR file, and you, you would execute PHP, uh, you would call PHP, and then tell it to execute the PHP lock. 
Uh, of course, you can also use Composer and do a Composer require and pull the PHP lock into your code base using that. Um, and so, so anyway, uh, those are just some ways that you can run it. And then the typical output is like right here where we have everything. Uh, let me blow that up just a bit. There we go. So we have the results of what the PHP lock uh, typically would look like right here. Um, now, uh, via Composer, of course, you can require it via Composer by calling PHP lock slash PHP lock and do Composer require and do it that way. Um, and so let's take a look at it a little bit further. So I've got a, I've got a command prompt open here. And uh, so the command prompt again is how you're going to execute this. And, and this might be slightly different if you're on Windows or if you're on a Mac. I'm on Linux. I use Linux as my primary uh, operating system on my laptop. So that's what I'm showing here. So, uh, so now I've already, I've already got, um, <clears throat> uh, let me go, where am I at? Oh, I need to go up one directory. So in this directory, I've actually got a PHP lock.far that I downloaded already using the wget, and you can see that it's green in color. So that means it is already executable, right? And then I've also got concrete five, already here on my drive. So now using that, if I change directory into the concrete five directory, then what I can do is I can issue a command. It's just a regular PHP command where I say uh, PHP, cause I'm gonna use that to execute the file, go up one directory and get me the PHP lock.far. Now I want it to be verbose. So I'm gonna put uh, uh, the V there. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell it to, uh, look for files with names that follow a certain pattern. And that pattern I want to do is I want it to look for files that end in .php. So I'm putting the asterisk here as the wildcard, anything that ends in .php. Now, as, uh, as an aside, something else that you might want to do, if you're, if you're building a modern application, chances are you've already got Composer installed and you've been doing a Composer require and you've been installing uh, third-party packages. By default, Composer puts that in the vendor directory. Now, since I typically do a PHP lock on my own code, I don't, I don't care about the number of lines of code in, in libraries that I'm including in after I've already vetted them, of course. But once I've got them vetted and I'm pulling in, into my application, I don't need to include those in my lines of code. They're not code that I have to maintain myself. So what I wanna do is I want to exclude, and what I'm going to exclude is the vendor directory. So I'm putting vendor in there and I'm excluding that vendor directory. And I put it, I'm putting a dot next because I want it to run this command in the current directory. Now, if I hit enter on this, it's gonna go ahead and run that and put the report out straight in the terminal. Like I said before, it would, it would give me the result straight out to my terminal. Alternatively, if I wanted to make this a little bit more readable with a text file or something like that, I could then tell it to output those results to a file, we'll call it phplock.txt, right? So I'm gonna output it to a phplock.txt, run it again, it runs the file, and now if I look in that directory, uh, in concrete five, I see that I do have a phplock.txt. I can open that, and then I can look, in the, look at the contents of that within my text editor. So I can see that it's got 914 directories. It's got 300 or 3,803 files. It's about 325,638 lines of code. And of that, about 15, almost 16% of those lines of code are actually comments. So, and I can go down through here a little bit more, but I'm not gonna do that right now. I'll do that here in a, in a little bit. But anyway, we can see that we are getting, we are getting the results of this. Now, the thing is, is sometimes when I'm dealing with customers and I'm having them run the PHP lock and execute this, often they might not have a PHP environment already installed, ready to run a PHP file like the PHP lock. Sometimes it might just be business people. Uh, they might not be able, they might not have the, the, a good version of PHP. For instance, a current version of PHP lock, I think is requiring higher versions of PHP. So you wouldn't be able to run something like a 5.3, 4, or 5, or 6 maybe. 
Um, alter uh, also, I did find out recently this may have been fixed. So uh, if you if you're if you find something different, please forgive me for saying this. But uh, a, a short while ago, I tried using the PHP lock with PHP 7.3 and it wouldn't run. There was there was something there was some code in PHP lock that would not run on 7.3 because of a deprecation in 7.3. Uh, it was something minor, but and I'm sure the PHP lock folks, Sebastian might have already updated it, I don't know. But, uh, but uh, the last time I tried it, maybe a month ago, it was still broken. Um, in PHP 7.3, so I had to, had to fall back to PHP 7.2 in order to run it. Um, now, <clears throat> the way that I know that is because what I've done to make this easier for those clients who uh, don't actually have a PHP environment to run this on is I've created a Docker image to make this easier for everyone. Now I created this image a long, long time ago, but I keep it updated. And uh, so if you do a search on Docker Hub, just do a search for Adam Culp. And when you search for Adam Culp, one of my one of my popular images is PHP hyphen code hyphen quality. You can see here, um, I, I this has actually been pulled three or 3,400 times. So 3,400 times roughly, this package has been pulled down by other people and used. So please feel free to use it. It's, it's, it's open source. Uh, there's also a GitHub repository here. Uh, linked on the GitHub page or on the on the Docker Hub page, where you can actually go and see the repository. Um, and really, all there is in that repository is just a Docker file. It is just a Docker file that uh, that installs Docker and gets everything up and running that the PHP lock and the other QA tools need. Uh, but please feel free feel free to use it. Feel free to look at the code. Make sure make sure that you vet it before you use it. Now. Uh, by using this Docker image, I've made it so simple. All you have to have is just Docker installed. You don't have to have PHP. You don't have to worry about Apache or any of that other stuff. You just have to have Docker. And then you can do something as simple as this. If I scroll down here, uh, and let me blow this up just a bit. If I scroll down the page just a little bit, oh, I clicked the link on accident. Didn't want to do that. Uh, you can see here I've got PHP lock as one of the items in this uh, PHP code quality thing. I've got other things in here like mess detector and PHP compatibility for checking the versions of PHP to make sure that your code is compliant to different versions of PHP. But I've got this command here and you can pretty much just copy and paste this uh, in your command line if you're in the current working directory, right? So in this case, I'm in the concrete five directory. And if I look here, I've still got the PHP lock. So let's go ahead and, and delete that one. So now I don't have it anymore. And we can look, I don't have the PHP lock anymore. Now taking that command that I, that I copied out of that page, then what I can do is I can paste that in here and I can run it. And basically it will fire up a Docker container with that image and it'll run the same command that I ran earlier and it's just running the PHP lock. And if I look here, sure enough, I have a PHP lock file again. And so it's created it, I can look at it and we see it's exactly the same thing. So using Docker, it was super fast. It was nice and easy to run. I didn't have to worry about having PHP installed. I didn't have to worry about all the other things that you have to worry about, you know, possibly running PHP via command line. It ran within the Docker container using the image that I provided. Now that image, by the way, um, if we if we look at the Docker file, which I can see the Docker file from right here in, uh, in hub.docker, uh, we can see that it, it is actually using P PHP 7.2 CLI because 7.3 didn't work when I tried it. But anyway, so uh, so that being said, let's take a look at the let's take a look at the uh, PHP lock file just a little bit. Um, so in the PHP lock file, like I said, uh, there's about uh, 32, uh, 325,638 lines of code in Concrete 5 and about 15.92% of those are actually comments. Now, some of the things that I look for in the lock file, especially when I'm, when I'm working with customers, uh, one of those is this. 
because comments can very much be a code smell, right? And if you don't know what a code smell is, look that up. Uh, I'm not going to go into too great de a depth here what code smells are, but, um, but comments can be a code smell. And what I mean by that, now please don't, don't finish this video and say, Adam Culp told me I don't have to put comments in my code because that is not what I'm saying. Um, please comment your code and comment it well. But uh, what I typically look for here is I, I, I typically am looking for comments to be around 25 or, or a little bit lower percentage of any given package, any given application. Now that's not to say if you have more than 25% or less than 25%, you're creating bad code. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that any more or less than 25% can be a code smell. The reason why it might be, a, it, if you have more than 25% uh, in comments, it's possible you're spending too much time explaining your code and maybe the code is not as high a quality as it should be, right? And that's just one for instance. I'm not saying that's always the case. I'm just saying that's a possibility. So those are some of the things, uh, usually comments can red flag me if I see, for instance, if I see none, right? If I see 5% um, lines of comments within the code base, that's usually an indication that I'm going into a not a very well documented application and it's going to be troubles. Now, we can also look here and see the lines of code within our classes, for instance. Uh, we can see the uh, <clears throat> we can see, uh, you know, the average class length. So in, in concrete five, the average class has 23 lines of code. The maximum class length, which means it's the largest class in the entire uh, application is around 1150 lines of code. Now it's actually 1147, I, I rounded there. Um, but we can also see in our methods, we can see that uh, the average lines of code in a, in a method is four, uh, but the maximum is 140. So there is a, there is a method somewhere that has 140 lines of code in, in one method. Um, so again, you can see very quickly how I can really gain some information from this PHP lock to indicate the code base that I might be working with when I'm dealing with the client. A little bit farther down, we can see cyclomatic complexity. We can see the average cyclomatic complexity per line of code is 0.29, whereas the average complexity per class is almost eight, right? And, uh, and, and of course we can see uh, there is a class that has 360 cyclomatic complexity. Um, so, so again, just giving us some more insight into the code base. Uh, we can of course see uh, how globals are being used or not used as the case might be within the code base. Uh, we can also see namespaces that exist within the structure. We can see any traits, if traits are, are included, how many interfaces, how many classes are there, and how many of them are abstract versus being uh, concrete classes. That's kind of funny, concrete classes in concrete five. Um, we can also see, for instance, uh, you know, the, the number of methods uh, and the number of functions. Uh, as we, you know, and breaking that down. So it, it can really give kind of a ballpark. So as, as customers are reaching out to me and saying, Adam, can you help us? This is gonna be my first stop so I can really be able to reach out to them and give them some decent help because I'm gonna know what I'm getting into. And uh, so I hope this video was helpful for you. That is the PHP lock and that is how I run it via command line. And there's multiple ways to do it. But, uh, but of course you can, you can always use my image and you know, create a Docker container using just a nice simple command and use PHP lock on all of your code as well. So thanks for coming by. If you liked the video, please subscribe and like us down below. Tell your friends, click that share button down there and share it on Twitter uh, and also share it on, uh, on, on other social medias as well. Let people know we're here. I really appreciate you helping me spread the word. And um, if you have any questions or any feedback at all, please, please leave it in the comments below. Thank you for coming by. 